to do is I want to show you um, how to find the describe the transformation. Uh, we have three, four different graphs for the absolute value function. We have y equals the absolute value of x minus 3, y equals the absolute value of x plus 6, y equals the absolute value of negative x, and y equals the absolute value of x. So what I want to do is I want to show you um, how each of these transformations are going to affect your graph. So the first thing we need to know is exactly what does our parent graph look like. If you remember, an absolute value graph, which is, let's just write it, um, I'll write the original parent graph, which is y equals absolute value of x. If we were to plug in numbers for this, if I plugged in 0 for x, I'd get 0. Uh, and let's say I plugged in 2. Well, y equals absolute value of 2 is 2. So, and then the other thing is, if I, what if I plugged in y equals negative 2? Well, absolute value, or I'm sorry, x equals negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is still going to be 2. So therefore, this is what we call um, the absolute value graph. And it's reflective about your y-axis, as you notice. Now, there's a couple things that come from this formula that are going to help us be able to determine what our transformations are. The next thing we to look at is our transformations. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it Our transformation code. So what this tells us, these, these help us determine our h and our k where our graph is going to move. One important thing is this bottom point, which we like to kind of call like our vertex, the bottom of our graph, the vertex is labeled at the point of h comma k. Alright? And what a is going to do, a is going to help us either um, compress or stretch um, how wide or uh, skinny really our absolute value graph is. And our h or k, that's going to move our graph up or down. The other important part is also if a is positive, our graph is going to be open up. And if a is negative, then it's going to be opening downwards. All right, so let's go and take a look at and see how these graph, how this is going to affect us. And what I'll do is I'm going to draw a short little graph. And then what I'll also do is I'll kind of use some examples so you can see why it works that way. So the first one is absolute value y equals absolute value of x minus 3. So the only thing I noticed from my original graph to now, what I've done is I've induced a function outside of my function. See, here's the original function, absolute value of x. Whenever you alter it, though, you need to look at what are you being, what are you altering? Well, I'm altering a number outside of my function. I'm subtracting 3, which is the same thing as k. So what you guys need to know from that is whenever you add or subtract a number outside of your function, you're going to be shifting the graph up or down. So k is going to be shifting up or down. So this graph is going to be shifted three units down. And it's going to be the exact same graph, but now it's just going to be shifted three units down. And let's take a look at a table just to make sure that's going to be correct. Let's choose, let's choose our two points again, y equals uh, 2. Well, y equals 2, absolute value of 2 is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And again, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, minus 3 is still negative 1. So you can see how this graph, it shifted it downwards, and this is going to make sense. Horizontal transformation. This is probably going to be one of the uh, most tricky one to get because a lot of students get this mixed up uh, with my sh vertical shift. So here I look at my function, I get, all right, what am I doing to my function? Well, here what I'm doing to my function is I'm adding a 6 inside of the function. So you can see you're messing inside the function, which is like this h. Now here's where it gets confusing. The formula for transformation says ax minus h. So if I want to write it with a minus h, I can typically rewrite this whole thing like this, x minus a negative 6. So what that's telling me because x minus a negative 6 is the same thing as x plus 6. So when I have a subtract, when I subtract 6, what that negative 6 is telling is I'm going to shift my graph 6 units to the left. And kind of run out of space here. Well, I'll just pick over here. I'm all right. So let's pick our, our normal um, graph here. Let's go and pick our two points. Let's pick uh, y equals absolute value of 2. My, uh, 2 plus 6, and 
let's do y equals 2, absolute value of a negative 2, plus 6. And 2 plus 6. Okay, so when we pick our point 2, what we notice is 2 goes to absolute value of 2, so 1, 2 is up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I go ahead and pick the point. What about when I go over to negative 2? Well, negative 2 goes over uh, 1, 2 goes up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And you might say, man, well, this doesn't show an absolute value graph. This shows that, you know, a line. Well, the reason why is we haven't actually gone to our vertex yet. And so what to do for this problem is we're going to have to probably keep on picking numbers until we get to zero. A very helpful way to find the vertex is obviously we need to figure out when is our y going to be zero. So if I plugged in y equals a negative 6 plus 6, I'll get y equals zero. So negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. And I know my graph is not absolutely perfect, but what you guys can notice is the graph did shift six units to the left. It did not shift six units to the right. A lot of students get that mistaken because they see the plus six, they think it goes six units to the right. Be careful with that. Um, the last two, I told you guys if A is uh, negative, it's going to reflect it. Um, so let's go and show this right here. Here, if you know my two equations, if I said, y equals 2 absolute value and y equals 2 negative 2 absolute value. Well, both those equations equal 2, right? Well, if my answer is to have a negative on the outside of them, now both of those two answers are going to be negative 2. So if I have a negative outside there, then now both of these functions are now going to be negative 2. So going over 2 will take me to down 2. And going left 2 will take me to down 2. Alright? Now, the opposite works for when it's inside of the function. Now, I'm going to just kind of run out of time and I kind of run out of space as well, but I can easily tell you that um, for this function, for an absolute value function and a quadratic, it doesn't matter if you're making a negative inside your function or not. And here's the reason why it doesn't matter if this x is negative or positive the absolute value undoes it, right? Because if you have a negative 2, the absolute value is still 2. And if you have a positive 2, the absolute value is still 2. So it doesn't matter if this number is negative or positive. And what, this, what the negative inside of the function does is it actually reflects about your y-axis. But what you guys notice is my graph is already reflexive. So my points are already reflexive, so there already is symmetry in this graph. I can't create another... Um, I can't create any reflections about my y-axis with this. However, I can reflect about the x-axis. So that is just a brief, brief kind of overview of how to find transformations with absolute value function.